Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I've been waiting for this moment for some time, and I wondered uh, when will it happen. Well, it just did. And that is, um, it is uh, Great Britain's contact of Kremlin. So they contacted the Russian Federation in order to um, help those two former British soldiers that were uh, captured and uh, uh, by the, they call them separatists uh, in Donbass, Lugansk regions. If you are not familiar with the past, uh, Great Britain uh, and uh, Russia had a very, um, how should I put it, chilling relationship. They didn't uh, cooperate, didn't communicate. They were just throwing jabs at one another. And uh, <clears throat> when those uh, people uh, were captured, those foreign fighters were captured, uh, then uh, Great Britain said that they would do everything in their power to uh, save them somehow. And uh, when uh, Dmitry Peskov was asked about uh, that, he said that uh, Great Britain should not talk to us, should talk to the um, new uh, republics where the, um, the guys are held, the prisoners. Great Britain obviously doesn't want to do that because that means uh, recognizing the authority of those regions, those uh, republics. Therefore, they had another chance. Now, another option, that is to call the Russians and discuss that with them. Even though um, they said, uh, the Great Red Beat and the Foreign Ministry said that they will uh, try to solve the problem through Ukraine. Well, that didn't work out. So now, Great Britain remained, uh, was left with uh, the last option, which is call the Russians and uh, somehow show, how should I, um, show a little bit of uh, submissiveness or something by talking to them after you didn't want to talk to them and you, you know, looked beyond them. So let's see, this is an article from Reuters from today, June 21st, 2022. And uh, Britain asks for help over Donetsk death sentences. This is the title. So Russia's ambassador in London, London said on Tuesday that Britain had asked for Moscow's help in connection with two British citizens sentenced to death in a Russian-backed separatist region for fighting for Ukraine. According to the breakaway Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, in eastern Ukraine, this month sentenced Britain's Aidan Aslin and Sean Pinner and Moroccan Brahim Sadun to death for mercenary activities. That's their take. Their families deny that the trio was uh, contracted by the Ukrainian armed forces are mercenaries. Britain says its citizens were regular soldiers and should be exempt under the Geneva Convention from prosecution for participation in hostilities. And I'm um, quoting. There was an approach by the British to us. They sent us a note, but the note was so full of such arrogant and didactic expressions that it really didn't produce any desire in us to cooperate in these questions. Ambassador Andrei, Andrei Kelin told Russia 24 TV, and I'm quoting again, they need to approach the DPR. Our recommendation remains the same. Klein said, Kelin said, I'm sorry, not Klein, because it would be uh, Zelensky, probably. Though Russia does not carry out the death penalty, the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics, whose independence is recognized only by Moscow, have it on the statute books. Actually, um, when Lavrov was pressured by, what's his name, Goldenberg, Goldberg, the BBC uh, interviewer, he said it's not true. It's not true that uh, uh, this uh, Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics were uh, um, recognized only by Russia. Well, I will repeat that. Now, if he's lying, I'm lying too. Uh, British Foreign Ministry did not respond to a request for comment. So, this is it. The Russia said, we told you, you got to talk with those entities. They're independent. 
the British will not do that because they are afraid uh, that they will be, you know, recognizing the authority of those courts and those, uh, you know, uh, governments or whatever they are right now, leaders and handlers of the country. What's, what's left there then? What can they do? Probably they will use their, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, lackeys, which is Ukraine in this case, and ask them, hey guys, why don't you talk to them in our name? On our name. So probably this was going to be, it's going to be the Vassal state, Vassal state, which is Ukraine in this case, will talk for its uh, boss, the United, uh, United Nations and uh, Great Britain, with those guys. It's going to look a little bit um, face saving, you know, for uh, Great Britain. Uh, what can they do? They tried this with Russia, which I was waiting because they said they will do everything in their power. But they didn't mention would it be an armed, uh, uh, I don't know, action or will it be uh, some, uh, I don't know, forces trying to help those guys? I don't know. Everything in their power. So we'll see. I uh, assume that eventually, after they're going to tell the Ukrainians to talk with these uh, republics, and the Ukrainians probably will uh, do that or nothing will come out of that the Brits will have to contact them. And I tell you why. Because Great Britain gives the appearance of a democratic system. And in a democracy, in a democratic system, you know, political system, uh, you are in a competition. It's a, uh, as I said, popularity competition, where you have to look better than the guy next to you. So therefore, you can't allow to be attacked with anything from any angle by your opposition. So you have to look good. So Boris Johnson, if he doesn't appeal to the republics over there, he's going to be attacked by his enemies or competitor for the power in a, by um, telling that, oh, he didn't try that. He should have tried that. He should definitely should have tried that. Now, Boris Johnson will do that because he's going to say, see, I tried that. And then the other guys will say, yes, but you spoke with an unrecognized um, two republics unrecognized, and how could you do that? You actually provided uh, legitimacy to those governments. See how it works? Neither way is good. If he doesn't talk to them, that oh, he didn't try everything. He should have done that. It's too late now, so obviously he should have done that. Now, if he does, <gasps> don't negotiate with terrorists, remember? Don't negotiate with those. You recognize them? Even if the guys say, well, I tried everything in my power. Well, that's certain, certain, um, Certain, um, how should I put it? You go as far as you don't go over that. You know what I mean? I mean, so it, this is uh, this is how democracy works. Even if the main goal here will be to save those guys, regardless if you put your knee down, if regardless if you talk with those guys, you, your goal is not should not be to win an election, is but to save those guys' life. But you see how it works in a democracy. Being afraid to communicate with those because these guys are going to attack them or giving them legitimacy, legitimacy, those guys will let those Brits to be whatever the, they were sentenced to what. So, yeah, it's the same thing when you have a, a court of justice and you have the attorneys over there. The attorneys are not there to find the truth. The defense attorney is over there to defend his or her client with everything legal that he can or he can obstruct whatever information he can hide things if he's not found about it he can do that you don't didn't find about it i'm not going to bring it up even if he knows that his client possibly committed that thing his job is to defend him his job is not to find the truth so this is something that is kind of like yes and no Nevertheless, I think they should talk with whomever is necessary to save those guys or at least try to alleviate their death sentence. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.